going on everybody travis with rac garage i'm back i'm alive i know it's been a week and a half probably since my last double and maybe two weeks it's been a while um but as you can probably tell by my voice i've been sick still sick and it's been a week and a half two weeks <coughs> this video is uh a few days of while i was first getting sick you can probably tell um, not doing so hot, but I still get some stuff done. Uh, work on the rear corners of the 32.3 window. And that's pretty much all I get done. Um, you know, life happens. You get sick. You got to kind of take it easy. Um, I have a little bit more content that you'll see. Kind of probably mixed in a few videos. Um, it's not going to be anything crazy, but you'll tell that I'm not feeling well. Um, but you know, that's just kind of a disclaimer. Let's jump into this video. Uh, it's a pretty good one. Some things might be repetitive cause I do two sides. Um, but here we go. Thirty-two action, but I'm gonna be working in here, um, building these corners. So I got this one on Chris's all figured out, all set, um, all repaired. You know the way it's supposed to be. So now I just took a pattern there, which I think is right. I'm going to bead roll this out and then form the shape into it. That's what I think will work. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's just get after it. I... I know this one isn't going to come out the best, so not going to get disappointed. I did do a test piece um, here. I ended up getting pretty close um, to the bead on a 32-3 window, the body line. So um, the only thing I don't like about it is uh, this tooling marks, they're not terrible. They could definitely be DA'd out. Um, but the dies I have for this Harbor Freight, whatever you call it, um, they're very sharp. Uh, and I don't like that. But, you know, kind of is what it is. So, I'm going to do my best here and see what we can come up with. I really need a light. I can't see anything. I'm going blind. This is where I really could use a powered bead roller. So I can see what the heck I'm doing. There we go. First bead. Not terrible, just very sharp. I'm gonna have to uh, do some hand work to uh, get these to be the right, you know, the right profile. Inside here is nice to be sharp, but outside here, I really don't want it to be that sharp. Um, and for the straight sections, uh, for my test piece, I took my linear stretch die and my planishing hammer, kind of went over the edge, but. On this radius here, I don't know if I can do that. Um,
All right, so this corner is proving to be very hard. Um, this is the first, like, you know, test piece. You know, this corner didn't come out well at all. Um, bead roller dies I got, it seems like it just, these tight corners are just chewing it up. And obviously, I made the bead in the wrong place plenty of times. I'm just trying to, like, mold this one until I get it the shape correctly and the beads in the right place and then i'll make like a real one because obviously this is not going to pass for anything um but i kind of figured that my little paper that i made at first here is wrong so made my version of a flexible shape pattern um taped it a bunch of times different ways and put uh you know, baby powder on the back side, the sticky side, so it's no longer sticky. Um, so obviously this fits. I, I drew my lines while the impression, while it was on there, um, all stuck down. So I know these lines are where they need to be, but I'm just kind of thinking here, like, this gets shaped and moved around you know, curled around the corner and all that junk. Um, thinking if I put the beads in right where these lines are, is it going to be correct? I don't know. I'm, I'm scratching my head a little bit on this one right now. Uh, there's tons of, you know, beads that need to line up. Metal that needs to, you know, form into each other. So... I'm going to try my hardest and figure that out. Uh, so that's going to be tough. And bottom down here is more shape in the actual piece than I thought there was. So once this flattens out, look at that. Sticks straight up almost. And this here. Oops, sorry. This here. Uh, this section here has some shape in it too. So I think... Before I put all the beads in, I think I'm going to hit it with the English wheel or something and kind of like bring that shape up on the edge, bring this shape there, um, and then start beading it. Um, honestly, not sure what I'm going to do about this corner. That's a very tight corner. Um, I don't know. thinking about making a die uh, I could very well make a die it's just gonna take longer but maybe if I just make it it'll be shorter in the long run I don't know what I'm doing right now just kind of thinking it out but stuff like this really challenges my little brain my little peanut brain um, so I'm just trying to figure it out there's gonna be many of these test pieces that you know, go wrong. I it, I think I'm at the point where I need to start another one just because I have that little uh, flexible shape pattern here. So, um, yeah. And I'm also thinking about doing little cuts along the lines. Not fully cutting them out, but just doing like perforations so I can put my Sharpie in the perforation and like mark it on the paper. I don't know. We'll see. As you can tell, I've been wheeling this panel up just to kind of give more shape to everything. 
before I put a bead in it. So we'll see what happens here. Put a ton of shape here, a ton of shape there. Um, put the first bead in, we'll see what it looks like. stuff with uh, the throat size here. Back looks nice. Let's see, hover for this is this is a die I just got in a in an eBay listing. You know, not the greatest, but it leaves a better finish than the Harbor Freight ones. I'll tell you that. Harbor Freight's really sharp, almost too sharp, but gets the job done. So now let me see. Take my gloves off. I guess I'll try to do this one, this here. Um, this, I know I can do until like there, and I might turn around and do this one till there. And I don't know what I'm gonna do there. Maybe some hand hammer work. I don't wanna mess up that corner. We knew a welder that could fix his toy. Oh yeah. You, <laughs> you don't feel that. good? Eh, I'm alright, but... I had a little stomach ache, and I also like feel a little cold coming on. Oh, that's not fun. Do you have sunglasses, Grammy? I do. Well, just take it easy. Get some fresh air in there in a little while. It's open. The front's open. Oh, the door's open on the yeah. side? Yeah. Oh, good. Actually, false alarm's not that bad. It just looks bad. I won't be able to use this piece. But um, it's also just another test. Got to see if I got enough shape somewhere. Now I'm going to try to bend it like that. Here comes the handwork. I just uh, took a, what do you call it? A socket, a 10 mil. Put it on an extension. Bam. Kind of got the end of the bead there. Now I need to kind of make the transition. Uh, from my old stuff to the new stuff. Yes, it's very crude and ugly right now uh, but It's my second one, you know, it gets better with time. So and I'll figure out the process what I need to do to what um, 
so yeah, let me just get this because uh, this is this is this one's closer than my other one. Uh, this one actually, you know, like fits how it's supposed to. Uh, the beads just aren't nice. Like, look at that, gross, too deep. Um, this one's all right, I guess, but I I did a bead over the other bead. I had to flatten it out. Uh, this one's good, and this down here is good, but. The rest of it, not so much, but I know what I'm doing now. So, you know, let me finish this off and I'll try to, you know, I'll do some finish work and make it look halfway decent, you know, um, just to keep myself sane. And who knows, it might be good enough for whatever this is called. Um, really haven't come up with a name for this thing yet could be a chicken coop because we got chickens but it didn't come out of a chicken coop and the chicken coop is like really cliche um i don't know something something gotta call it something but let me uh let me hit this with some uh some sockets <laughs> and uh this soft taper is my corking tool thank you steve um I'm going to hit the inside with this since it's a softer edge. I got to mark it out. And then the inside, these two lines that I need to make, I will do with this. Bam. I'm going to find a smaller one. But yeah, you get the gist. All right, so I got, you know, overall kind of shape here. I think I got too much shape here in the front or the back. Um, but let me uh, let me flange this back edge to create the wheel opening, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, I do like the way it looks, but it's not as refined as I want it to be. Um, and I still got to deal with the bottom edge. It's not round enough.
right, so working on the other side, and this side is going to be exponentially harder because I don't have the corner to, uh, you know, push it up against. I only have the one I made and that one uh, to kind of compare uh, left to right. So it's not going to be easy, but I think, you know, I kind of know what I need to do because I did the other side. And I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on this one because I was still kind of figuring out that side, which I'll kind of grab it. Uh, so I'm unsure if this flexible shape pattern can be flipped inside out or not. Um, and I really don't want to do it because... You know, then I lost this. No, I have to lose it, but I don't have to make another one. I don't want to have to do that. So I kind of figured out for the most part where I want this to go. Um, and then made some marks on this panel. I did this bead first. Nothing, nothing crazy. I didn't go too far. I caught myself before I got too far. Um, and yes, I'm not on the line, but I drew a second line because I figured out I drew that first one wrong. Um, so now I want to bring up shape in this area to, you know, because when you lay this one down here, there's, there's some shape in here that needs to be in this area. Uh, so I'm going to bring this up some with the English wheel, maybe a little bit of planishing hammer on the near the bead um, I should have done it before I forgot it's only been a day but I totally forgot if I put the shape in it before or after um, so I'm putting it in after whatever we'll figure it out figure out see what happens um, so I'm gonna do that and then I'll make this line here and then I'll make this line here um, because when you make, I don't want to just go ahead and do these lines just because I marked them out. Because, you know, doing a deep bead like this, because it's pretty deep, um, it pulls material from places. So if I just go on this bead, this one might be shorter, might be too big, this distance might close up. Um, so I kind of want to do one at a time do some work to the panel, do another bead, do some work to the panel, um, just to make sure everything's gonna line up once I'm done with it. Um, so, side note, I was gonna make a few of these uh, to sell, because I'm making them now, and you know, what the heck, just make a few more while it's in my head. These are, uh, becoming a bigger project than I thought they were going to be. I thought I was just going to bead roll this out real quick, bend it into shape, and like flange an edge, maybe kind of strick and stretch the edge around to form the curve, and pretty much essentially be done. Uh, but there's a lot more shape in this panel than it looks like, and it just takes forever to get to this point. Like, not, not this point. That took five minutes but this one here there's like there's like four hours five hours into this um to get all the correct shapes everywhere and it's just plain annoying you know so uh, i'm not crazy about doing it um six seven eight times I got some shape in here. It's a bunch of shape actually. Um, I'm gonna put a little shape in here before I put a bead down here. Just because this needs to flare up a ton. So pretty much gotta look like that. By the time you know anything gets done, it needs to look like that. Because there's once I bend it, there's a ton of shape. In that corner um, 
So, that's what I want to do now is shake that up. Um, I might even turn the power hammer on, put my stretch, linear stretch dies and just stretch that out because, you know, that's a lot of shape to, to get in a flat panel with the angles wheel. It'll take a little while, so you know, I'll put my power hammer pants on and go for it. That's right, so the best linear stretch you'll ever get it's with a power hammer. Material right up and look at the finish on that. Woo. Okay. Looks weird. Doesn't look like the shape at all, but trust me. Trust the process, my friends. <clears throat> okay, so now, I'm just gonna wheel a few sections of this up because it goes up plenty, but it needs some shape in the middle. It's kind of flat. So. Pretty good. Okay, so got enough shape in here that I'm happy with. Um, so I'm going to run these beads. So I don't know why I have my earplugs on. Um, it's why you run the English wheel because it's not loud. Um, I'm gonna run these two beads here. Come down, come down, well, come down the first one, then remeasure, come down the second one. Um, but what do you call it? I'm only going to go down until it starts curving on each side uh, because this area here I'm going to do with a hammer and a actually a 10 mil socket honestly um, you'll see me do that on the, uh, the bag but let me get this first line in here let me measure make sure we're looking correct on the bead 
with. Okay. Did a little bit, tiny bit. Let me go check it. I feel like I want to bring it in some. Yeah, it should. It should bring itself in. I'm taking a chance here. Trusting the panel. Trusting. Trusting a lot right now, honestly. To be frank with you. And now I'll measure to the other line I need to do. That this works out. I just measured. Uh, I put my gauge in here, and it's exactly to this inner line. I moved the whole thing over and didn't scramble my lines. Um, I should have, but you know I haven't messed it up yet. So yet. But I wouldn't uh, recommend doing this to anybody because it's very easy to mess up and follow a different line if you have six lines on there. So don't do that. There it is so far. Minimal tooling marks. Could probably DA that out. Bottom side looks great because this bottom die is nice. Um, but now I need to do this old thing. Cool. Let me go and see if it matches. This looks a little wonky. Um, Let me see if that matches up to the body or not. All right, so, you know, I'm not super impressed with this one so far. Um, I think I can definitely get it usable, uh, but this really pisses me off. It's not a, a sweep. It's like a, I don't know, a peak to a roof, low pitch. Bent right here, and straight and straight. Um, I blame my bead roller uh, because I have to have only one hand on the panel and one heel, one hand spinning it. And this corner, since it was bent down a bit for me shaping it, was getting caught on stuff, and I couldn't seem to get curve back into these areas. I think it's gonna look all right. And no one's ever going to notice but me. Um, but hopefully next time I make these, um, I'll have a nicer bead roller. And I can just hit a pedal and use two hands to guide it so I don't have to deal with that mistake. There still is some curve to the other sides, but they look pretty damn flat. Um, again, not too happy with it, but... I am not going to do it again, not because I'm lazy, I'm just not going to do it again because it's not that big of a deal uh, that I need to redo that one. I'm sure if you got one from a patch panel place, it would be worse than that, so at least my beads line up. So, I'm going to knock this in, my little 10 mil, put it right in there. Smack away, leaning more towards, leaning more towards the back, 
so I don't get a full circular impression. We just kind of get the backside. And then touch it up with chisel. And the backside, since it's a softer curve on this, and it's a sharp inside here. See how it's in like all soft lines? There's no, there's nothing getting, you know, chewed up like the inside of that, which again, Harbor Freight dies are crap for. I'll use this corking tool with a soft corner on it. Let's kind of continue that around, you know, back and forth, back and forth until it looks decent. It's kind of what it did in the other one. So we do that and then we'll bend it around like right here, put a bend in it, you know, cut the edges, flange the edge over here, sorry, over here, uh, make it look like a corner instead of just oh, the middle finger. Whoops. There it is. I obviously put some dents in here. I got to wheel out, but that's a gist. Comes out all right. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll smooth that out first, actually, with the English wheel before I go and start bending it in half. Um. All right. truth here.
Okay. I think I'm gonna trim it down now to this shape and this shape. Flange that over so I know what material I have so I don't have to shape extra material. Because that's kind of a pain when you gotta shape too much stuff, you know? Looking pretty all right. Um, a couple of weird spots I gotta planish out, but uh, let me do this flange on the side here, and then the bottom flange can be tricky because I literally have nothing to go off of other than the opposite of this one, which you know sometimes doesn't always work out. So, see what we can do there. came out better um, let's see if I can't make that flange on the bottom
<laughs> the second corner, uh, not quite done yet. Um, this radius I have wrong. This one I like much better, so I gotta transfer this shape. It's more of a gradual sweep. Um, this one, I had a big pucker right here, so I concentrated on like getting it down and I ended up shrinking it too much. Um, it's all right, but I just want to make it match that one. And I have more material here than I do on that one. The other one kind of cuts in like that. Um, so that's why this one looks so much bigger than this. You can even see it on the, on the chair. That this one looks so much bigger than this one, but it's just I have more material after here. Same thing, just I got more of this one, so. Um, they do line up good, which is a plus. And I don't think I'm gonna be making these unless I can do the, uh, what do you call it? Like a buck of some sort to put it up against and hammer form it too and all that jazz. Um, Cause there's just, there's a lot here. And I think it's a waste of my time, unless someone wants to pay me by the hour to make these. So, but, you know, that case might come in, but just for a patch panel, I don't know if someone wants to do that, but the option's there. All right, guys, that wraps up this video with the corners. Um, kind of have a Clico together, lightly mocked up. Trust me, it doesn't look that great, but I'll show you. So this will kind of come back here, somewhat flow with that. You know, everything still needs to get welded together. This needs to be trimmed a bunch. Um, but yeah, I think it's looking pretty cool. Back end's coming together. I did order the sub rails, if I didn't tell you guys already. The sub rails, cross rails. Um, I think the floor section's in between. I'm not sure if it comes with the sub rail extensions or not, but Rayston was nice enough to make me templates of those, so if they don't come, I can make them just fine. Um, I do have the rear structure here. Um, you can't... You can't see it. But it's there. The rear panel, and I got it sandblasted. Um, chased all the threads in it so you know whatever but that structure's there and, uh, so hopefully this week I'll be getting those in so I can rip the body back off of this chassis put, lay the sub rails down get everything welded uh, riveted together however I'm gonna do it and start actually like welding a pillars to the sub rails um, I'm going to make steel b-pillars i know i wanted to make them out of wood it's just not going to happen um for the deadline that i have for this car uh which is fine i can always swap it out later if i wanted to um but yeah get those b-pillars made get the b-pillars locked in place so i can start swinging a door on this thing which will be really cool and really difficult but <coughs> so that's my plans with this Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry I've been gone, uh, but I'm back. I hope, unless tomorrow morning I wake up feeling like crap again. Whatever. Well, I'll live through it. Eventually I'll get better. So, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.